Looking up data from another table or worksheet is probably one of the most common activities that Excel users undertake when creating reports. And actually for many, when they learn how to use VLOOKUP and its ability to look up values from other worksheets and other tables, this was their first taste of Excel's power. But what do we do within Power Query because we don't have a VLOOKUP function or any lookup function? Well, actually we can use the merge transformation. Now the merge has so many options and we'll see in this video the kinds of things that we can do with a merge transformation that we can't do with a lookup function. So if you're ready, let's get started. Effectively, there are three types of lookup, an exact match, an approximate match, and a fuzzy match. An exact match is the most common, and that is where we look up an exact value and then want to return the corresponding item that relates to that exact value. An approximate match finds the value that's closest to, it might be closest above or closest below a specific value, and then returns another corresponding value. Fuzzy match finds values based on how similar they are to other values using a form of pattern matching algorithm. Power Query can handle all these types of lookups, though in this video we're focusing primarily on the first two. So let's start by looking at a scenario. So for our first scenario, we have three tables. We have our table on the left, which is our sales data. And you can see that we have a customer, a product, a month, and value columns. We then also have a table of customer data. And that contains a customer, a telephone, an address, a town, and a postcode column. Finally, we have a rebate table. This is the amount of rebate that a customer gets if they sell over a certain value. In our first example, we're going to calculate the total sales by town using an exact match. In the second example, we're going to look at the rebate that is due to each customer. And for this, we will use an approximate match. Okay, so we're now in Power Query and we have our three queries loaded. So for our first example, we want to create a new query that will hold the results of our merge transformation. So from the home ribbon, I'm going to come across to merge queries and click on that drop down and I have the option of either merging queries or merging queries as new. So if we want to create a new query, we will go with merge queries as new. So I'll click that. This then opens up the merge dialog box. Here we get to select which queries do we want to merge. So initially I want the sales query and I also want my customer's query. Between these two queries, the value that we want to look up on is the customer. So I'll select the customer column in my sales query and the customer column from the customer's query. Now it's worth saying that these tables do not need to have the same column names. It just so happens that in this example, we do. If we come down to the join kinds, you can see that we have join kind here. We can click on that and we can see the different kinds of joins that are available to us. For our purposes, for this example, we will use the left outer and then I'm just going to click OK. OK, this has created a new query called merge one. And we now have this additional column called customers. So I'm going to click on the expand icon. And this gives us access to all of the columns that we had within our customer's query. For this, all we need is the town. And I'm going to uncheck the use original column name as prefix. Now I can click OK. So if we look down here, you can see that we have a null value against Megamart. And that is because Megamart does not exist in our customer's table. So it can't find a match, therefore it returns null because we don't have a town value to return. And that's the same if we come down here and look at Wilson's of Greenvale. This also doesn't exist in our customers table, so therefore there isn't a town value for us to return. To complete our example, we're going to create a summary 
which is the total sales value by town. So I'll select my town column, and then from the transform ribbon, I'll click group by. From here, you can see that we have town, and I want to calculate the total value. And I want that using the sum operation on the value column. And then I'll just click OK. Perfect, we now have that table that lists our town and the total sales values. So let's close and load this into Excel. So go to home, close and load, close and load two. We'll have that as a table on a new worksheet. And I'll click OK. There's our summary that looks up the values between those two tables. Okay, let's supply those null values. So I'll come up to my lookup data. And my first customer is called Megamart. And I'll put them in the town of Gorenhaven. And then the second customer was Wilson's Greenvale. Let's put them in the same town. So when we come back to our merge, data, refresh all. There you go, we now have that summary by town and value. In this example, we want to calculate the value of a rebate due to a customer based on their sales value. So if a customer has sales greater than 500, they receive a 2% rebate. If they have sales greater than 750, it's a 5% rebate. And if it sells greater than 1000, then it's a 10% rebate. As we saw in the example above, the value returned by the merge transformation is null unless there is an exact match. Therefore, merge will only return a value if a customer has exactly 500, 750, or 1000 as their sales value. So for us to make this work correctly, we need to undertake a few more transformations. Okay, so I'm going to start by duplicating my sales query. And then I want to summarize this down to give me my total sales value by customer. So with my customer column selected, click transform and then group by. I'll call this total sales. The sum, and that's going to be on the value column. And I'll click OK. In the last example, we created our merge as a new query. So this time, just to look at how it works, let's just merge inside this same query. So I just click Merge Queries. You can see that when we do this, it pre-populates the table that we had selected initially. Now for this one, I want to look up my total sales value. And I want to look it up from my rebates table based on my rebate brand. Now you'll notice at the bottom that we have zero of nine rows. So nothing matches at the moment, but don't worry, that's exactly what we want. For my join kind, I want to select a full outer. So it has all the rows from both tables. Now I'll click OK. I'll then expand the rebates table. I don't want to use the original column name as prefix, but I want to retain both of those columns in there. Then I'll click OK. We now want to combine our total sales and our rebate columns. For this, I'm going to use an if statement. So I'll come across, add column, custom column. I'm going to call this total value. And then in my custom column, I'm going to type if my total sales equals null, then return the value from my rebate band else return my total sales. I've got no errors detected there, so then I'll click OK. So with my total value column selected, I then want to sort that column. So from the home ribbon, I can sort A to Z. Then get my rebate percentage column. I can select that, I'll right click, come to fill, and then fill down. Now in Power Query, we can't calculate on null values. So I'm going to select my rebate percentage column, come across to transform and then replace values. And I want to find null and replace that with a zero. And click OK. Right, we can now remove the null values from our customer column. 
And then the columns we want to keep are customer, total sales, rebate percentage, and then come across to home, remove columns, remove other columns. I can then select my total sales column and my rebate percentage column. And from the add column section, I can come across to standard and select multiply. That multiplication has now worked out the rebate that each of those customers is due. I can either rename this column here, or we can also see in the M code that it created that column name inside the code itself. So let's change that value there. It could be called rebate value. Perfect, now let's go home, close and load, close and load two. We'll load that as a table on a new worksheet. So in this example, we have simulated how we might do an approximate match using Power Query's merge transformation. Yes, it requires a few more steps, but it is possible. Okay, now let's move on to look at a few more examples and a few more scenarios that we might encounter. Now you might be thinking, what happens if we have multiple items that could match between tables? In Excel, VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH or XLOOKUP will always return the first item that it finds. But MERGE behaves differently. MERGE returns each instance of the matched item. So let's have a look at this now. Here I've got a table on the left that I've called PRODUCT and a table on the right that I have called STOCK. I've also loaded these tables into Power Query so that we can see how they behave. So in Power Query from the Home ribbon, I'm going to come across to Merge Queries as new. For my first table, I want my Products table, and then the second table should be the Stock table. I'll select the Size column from both tables, and we'll use a left outer join. You'll notice that we have five matches. So everything from the first table has been matched with something from the second table. I'll click OK. I'll then expand my stock column and let's suggest I just want to keep the units column and I don't want to use original column name as prefix. So if you remember, initially we had five matching items, but as soon as I click OK, we suddenly have seven items. And that's because we matched based on size. You'll notice here my product ID exists twice. It exists once with five units and again with seven units. So it hasn't just returned the first item it's matched, it's returned both items that have been matched based on the size criteria. Which means if we have this scenario and we only want to match one item, we need to remove the duplicate values from the table before we then perform the merge. Okay, finally, let's move on to look at what happens if we have multiple lookup criteria. Well, the good news is that Power Query doesn't restrict us to just one criteria. Let's say we want to match on one or two or three columns. Well, in Power Query, that's no problem. I'm going to come across to my source step over here. Now reopen my merge dialog box. So rather than just selecting on size, I've got the size column selected already. I can hold control, then click on color and then location. And if you notice, there's a small number that is placed next to each of those items. In my stock table, if I select those same items in that same order, so size, color, and then location, it means that we're now matching on multiple criteria. So at the left outer join, I'll click OK on that. So let's come across to the previous step that we had, and we can see that using those three criteria, we still have our five records. And actually this last item, so small black in location A2, there was nothing from our stock table that matched that. So using this approach, we can easily perform multiple column lookups between two tables. Well, that's it for this video. We've seen that Power Query doesn't have any lookup functions like VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH or XLOOKUP. Instead, it has the merge transformation. And with that, we can perform exact and approximate match lookups. But we've also seen that Merge enables us to return multiple items. 
and it can easily handle multiple criteria. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.